get started. And like I mentioned before, if you have any questions, feel free to just put them in the chat and uh, I'll try to get to all the questions that people ask. So this is the, the first webinar um, that, that Trader Post has ever done. Uh, first one that I've ever done actually, period, even outside of Trader's Post. So this is gonna be a little bit of a, a learning experience. Um, so bear with me as we, we work through this. Um, so the first thing that I kind of want to show you all and give you a high level overview of is trading view and how people can use indicators to visually indicate when to buy and when to sell on a chart. And a lot of traders use indicators like this to manually trade. And then some people take it one step further and they take the the indications on the chart and send alerts to a system like Traders Post. And then Traders Post can send those alerts to a broker. Um, so this particular strategy is called Momo. Uh, it was created by a guy named Matt DeLong, who is the CTO of Real Life Trading. So I'm gonna go grab, um, grab that link for you and I'll put it in the chat so that if you wanna put it on your trading view chart, you will be able to. So there's the link to that indicator. So an indicator is just visually indicating the buy and sell signals. And then there's also another type of um, system within trading view where you can actually back test strategies. So this is just the visual indicator, but you can see that if I, um, take this, there's another version of the Momo indicator, the Momo strategy. And when I put that strategy on the chart, TradingView will actually run that strategy on a historical set of data and essentially keep track of the list of trades that that strategy took. And it will output some performance. So you can see what the overall performance is compared to the buy and hold. So I'm gonna actually just run, I'm gonna adjust the dates here. Let's do from the beginning of two, 2021 until the end of the year. So you'll see that on the leveraged queues, the, on the 30 minute chart, it did 48.41%. Now the buy and hold was 84.91. So Don, the, the strategy is something that Matt DeLong sells separately. I think he charges $250 for it. But if you were to create your own strategy using TradingView, then you can basically create your own strategy and you can back test it. So, um, if you want the, the Momo strategy tester, you would have to get it from Matt DeLong within real life trading. But there are plenty of other strategies out there published on TradingView, not, not necessarily just Momo. So you can actually go to tradingview.com. Um, let's see, where is it? Uh, how do you get to it? Okay, so it's under community and then go to scripts. And then from here, you can basically browse all of the different strategies and ind indicators that other people have published for free. And you can kind of use those strategies to look at the code and see how it works. So let's just take one for example. Um, let's pick, let's see if I find a good one. Let's look at the zigzag waves and see if they'll let us look at the code. So you see here how I can see the code down here. This is the actual co code for that strategy. This one's a little bit more advanced, but a lot of people use TradingView to browse all the existing strategies. And then you can use it as a reference point to kind of figure out how, to, how PineScript works and how you can then take a strategy and modify it, or maybe just create an entirely new strategy. So this one looks like someone created a, someone named Ninja New. Um, you know, it looks looks like it was just published recently on December 30th. 
but this is a really great way to kind of just browse strategies, not necessarily to find a strategy that you're actually going to trade with, but ju just to kind of learn how trading view strategy tester works and how pine script works within trading view. So I'm going to go over here. I'm actually going to move this out of the way and I'm just going to use my browser for trading view. Let me make this bigger. So if I go over to the chart here and when you load up a indicator or a strategy on a, on a chart, you can hover over that strategy at the top left right here. And if you click these little double brackets, that basically allows you to open up the code for that, that indicator or strategy in, in TradingView. So you can see what it looks like and what the criteria is. And you can basically see that these strategy.entry, strategy.close, strategy.exit, strategy.close all, those are essentially like fake orders. It's like a, a simulated account. And when you run the strategy across a time frame, it basically just triggers these orders. And then that's what that's what you see over here is the result of those strategy calls. And let's go back and change the date um, again. Let's do the 2021 to the end of 2021. And you can see here that it indicates all of the trades that it would that would it would take. So let's go back in time to the beginning of the year. Let's see. So this is April. So right here is when the back tester starts taking trades. Let me zoom in a little bit so you can see better. And I'm going to actually make a change to the pine script just to demonstrate and clean things up a little bit. Uh, let's see, let's comment out these three lines. So it basically just removed the extra indicator, visual indicator. So now all we see is the simulated orders that got inputted into the simulated broker. So you can see right here, it went long on January 1st. So let's go pull up the list of trades here. So on January 7th, on this candle, on this 30 minute candle, at the close, 91.15, Actually, I think it's on the, let's see, the next candle. Yep. So on this candle right here, it triggered a buy. The close of that candle was 91.15. I'm gonna figure out why that's not lining up. Let's see. Will it? Oh, that's cool. I didn't know you could do that. Michael said that if you click the trade, it'll highlight it. Oh, cool. I didn't know that. So yeah, it was on this candle, but it says it go. It went long at ninety sixty. Oh, I see. It's at the open of the candle. So I'm hovering over this candle right here and pay attention to this number right here, 9060. So at the close, or sorry, at the open of that candle. And there's a subtle, there's a weird bug in trading view where notice that if I go back to the pine editor and I'm gonna undo that code change that I made and I'll click save. And look how the, visual indicator, this buy right here, it gets put on the previous candle, but the strategy tester actually enters on the open of the next candle. And in, in practice, it doesn't really matter essentially in most cases because the 
close of the previous candle is the open of the next candle. It's not always exact because it can gap. Sometimes you can see here that the close of this candle was 90.62, but the open of this candle was 90.60. So there's a two cent difference. But so I'm gonna recomment those lines of those code out so, so you can see just cleanly the entries for the strategy tester. And then, so on this date, it entered on the 7th and then it exited on this day, which was on the 11th, 9137. So that was a small little win there, um, almost 1%. So this is really useful because when you're building a strategy, you wanna understand what the performance of that strategy is. And it's easier to back test all at once with a few clicks of a button than having to wait a year while you paper trade and, and see the results of it. Now, the past results don't always mean it's gonna perform the exact same way in the future. Um, it depends on how the market moves and what the price action is during that time period. So just because something works well in the past doesn't always guarantee that it's gonna work just as well in the future, but it's, it's better than not testing at all. You definitely always wanna be testing these things. So all these individual trades are then summed up and the cumulative results are what get reported on this page right here. So the 48.41% versus the 84.91% buy and hold. Now you might ask yourself, well, why, why wouldn't I have just bought the leveraged queues at the beginning of the year and just held it? Well, the TQQQ uh, ETF is a leveraged ETF. So it's 3X the price movement of the queues. So if the queues moves $1, then TQQQ is going to move $3. So, you know, a 20% pullback on the queues could demolish your account by 60%. So you, you, it's not, the Qs aren't, the, the TQQQ isn't really necessarily meant for buy and hold and investing. It's definitely only intended for short-term trading. So the buy and hold is kind of irrelevant here. Then you can see it has other statistics, um, the percent profitable, average trade, average winning trade, average losing trade, um, average number of bars in a trade. So the this, this strategy tester is really, really useful. And you know, if you're gonna get into automated trading, this is a necessity. Like you literally cannot be an automated trader if you don't back test. Just like manual, manual trading, you have to back test. It's the same with automated trading. So a lot of people kind of jump into automated trading because they have this perception that, oh, it's just gonna do everything for me and I don't have to do anything. You still have to do the research. You still have to back test. You still have to find tickers that work well with your strategy. And one ticker may work well on one strategy and it may not work well on another strategy. So they, you have to find the strategies and the tickers and the timeframes that work well and test them rigorously. So just to show you another example, I'm running this on the 30 minute chart, but let's see what happens to the performance if I run it on the hour chart. So the performance actually went up. Apparently the, the TQQU, it actually works better on the hourly chart. Let's do the three hour chart. It starts to go down 33%. You can run it on the daily chart and it goes down even, even more. And if you think about the reason why, because the time frame is much longer. So the moving averages, the averages are, are bigger. So when there's more data in an average, that means that each individual number within that average has less of an impact on the average. So it takes quite a bit longer for, for it to trigger you in, but then also takes longer to trigger you out. So it's just a, a pro and con of the volatility of do you wanna get triggered in and out a lot and, and be more volatile or do you want to hold longer and potentially give up more of your gains? So it's, it can be a little bit more painful on the, 
the lower time frame because you're basically getting in and out a lot, but the cumulative returns over the full year are actually a lot better. All right, so that's on the, the strategy tester side. And I'm gonna switch back to the Momo indicator. And it's, it's really the exact same thing. It's the exact same logic. The indicator is just for visually seeing when you get a buy and when you get a sell indicator. And this is also what you would use to actually set up alerts. So I'm gonna hop over to Traders Post now. And if you don't already have an account, um, I'm logged in, so it shows this dashboard link right here. But normally you would see a register link and you can register and create an account. Once you register, you're gonna land on this dashboard here. And by default, every user gets a brand new uh, $100,000 paper account. And you'll see, I have more links here. You won't see these, these are you know special links for my own internal functionality, the admin functionality of Traders Post. Um, but I'm gonna actually just reset this to paper account um, just to show you, you can clear it out and let's just do, let's do $10,000 and let's delete the open positions and order history. So we're effectively kind of resetting the state of our paper account back to $10,000 and we're clearing out if there were any open positions and clearing out any of the, the old order history. So once we click reset, you'll see now that we have the uh, everything reset back to $10,000. And if we click over to the paper broker, you'll see that we don't have any open positions here. Um, so I'm actually gonna delete, I had done some tests in this account previously. So I'm actually going to clean this up and delete these webhooks so I can show you what it looks like if you were to set it up brand new. Uh, let me delete the subscription. And I'm going to delete the strategy. All right, so the, the main concept in Traders Post and inside of TradingView is this concept of a webhook. And a webhook is just a URL that can be, have data sent to it from one computer to another computer. So when I wanna have TradingView send an alert to Traders Post, I need a URL to input into TradingView. So the first thing I'm gonna do is create this new webhook. We'll call it test webhook. And let's just allow any ticker and we'll click save. And as soon as we do that, that now this webhook is created and it exists and we have this URL that was created. So we're gonna copy this and put it into our clipboard. We may come back to it later, but I'll just go ahead and copy it into my clipboard. And now I'm going to create a new strategy at links to that webhook. So you can just leave all these fields blank. This is for if you wanted to publish the strategy and so other people could subscribe to that strategy and you wanna give it details about the strategy, the URL to that strategy on TradingView, uh, who the author is and what the URL is, recommended account size, et cetera. And all of these settings down here are the default values that get created whenever a strategy is subscribed to by an end user. So we're just gonna leave all these values blank too. And I'll, I'll explain what some of these uh, options mean in, in, in the future. So let's go ahead and save this now. And so now we have this strategy created. And the last thing that we need to do is connect that strategy to a broker. So that when a signal comes into a webhook, it can basically convert that signal into an order for any of the subscribers that are subscribed to that strategy. So I'm gonna go over to subscriptions here and click new subscription. I think there is a question. Hugo has a question. Does Trader Post allow a trader to share his, her account trade strategy public so that it can be copied? Yes. Hugo, it can. Um, 
these strategies right here, for example, these are all published strategies that other people have published. Um, so they can set up the alerts from their own trading view account. And then basically multiple people can subscribe to that strategy, effectively kind of sharing, um, sharing the signals. So, you know, you could use this Momo ETF strategy and subscribe to it, but you don't actually even have to have a trading view account. You can just subscribe to it and share the signals and the alerts that I've already set up inside of my trading view account. So this strategy right here isn't published. So only I can see this. So I'm going to go ahead and subscribe to this strategy. And when you subscribe to it, it, it lets you choose which broker you want to connect that strategy to. In my case, I only have this paper broker here. So that's the only broker that I have listed here. If you had other brokers connected, you would see them listed here to choose from. So I'm just going to choose that paper broker, confirm yes. So let's auto submit, meaning that when a signal is received for that strategy, it's going to auto submit the order for, for that strategy subscription. Um, let's only go long for right now. And let's allow any ticker. And you can see it's connected to that Traders Post paper broker. And we're going to buy stock, stock shares. And this section right here is what controls the position sizing. So there's a variety of different ways that we can calculate the quantity. Um, for this example, let's just do 100% um, of our portfolio value. So I set up a paper account. It's a $10,000 account. So this is basically going to mean that I want to use 100% of that $10,000. We're not going to use a take profit or stop loss. And let's just go ahead and click save. So now you'll see that the these example entry order and example, example exit order, those are basically showing you what would happen if we were to get a signal and what orders would be calculated based on the configuration that you have selected over here. So just to show you how that works, let's change this to only be 50%. And take note of the total value for this order here. It's almost $10,000. So when I save this, notice the number of shares went down. And now we're only buying enough shares that can be bought with $5,000, which is 50% of the $10,000 account. So let's put this back to 100. And let's save that. And now you'll see that this amount goes back to 10,000. Now, what if, what if we wanted to go short? So let's change sides to short and click save. Now you see that the entry order is a limit sell short and the exit is a limit buy to cover. And you can see the quantity is calculated the same. It's just instead of going long, we're going short. So let's change this back to long now. And those settings are, are pretty good. And we can just, I think we can move forward now. Let me just do a quick review. Um, yep, everything looks good. So now let's enable that strategy subscription. So as soon as I enable this strategy subscription, it's live. As soon as a signal comes into that webhook, it would actually create a trade. And I'm gonna show you how you can take that webhook URL that we created earlier and how you can input that URL into TradingView so that when a strategy triggers an alert, it'll send that alert to Traders Post via that webhook URL. So I'm gonna authorize Traders Post to enable the strategy subscription and go ahead and click enable. And now it's live. So before I show you how to actually configure the the webhook as an alert in TradingView, we can actually just manually trigger a, a signal to that webhook. So if you go over to webhooks, click view next to your webhook, and then click send request. This basically just allows us to manually trigger a fake signal just for testing purposes to kind of show how it all works. So I'm actually going to uncheck test because I actually want this signal to trigger 
a trade within my strategy subscription. So we're gonna do the ticker square and we're gonna send a buy signal. So as soon as I click send here, so that actually triggered on the back end a process um, to, and the market is closed right now. So uh, <laughs> the, the order is basically queued for the next market open. Um, if I go back to the webhook here though, you'll see that if multiple people were subscribed to the strategy, you would actually see all the trades that got triggered for all of the subscribers to that strategy. So if I click this, it shows me my entry order. We bought almost $10,000 worth of Square, 64 shares. The trade was approved and it was approved because we checked auto submit here. Now, since, it's, since the market is closed right now, um, this is basically queued for the next market open. So as soon as the market opens tomorrow morning, it's gonna pull this order off of the queue and send it to the broker. Um, if you didn't, if you didn't want to uh, have it queued anymore, you can actually just click unqueue, and that basically would stop it from from being submitted. Excuse me. And uh, you have the ability to manually approve or reject. Um, so I'm going to reject this trade now. I'm going to show you what it would look like if let's turn off um, let's turn off auto submit. And now let's go back here and let's trigger another signal with the send request button. So we're gonna send a buy for Square. And now I have another trade, except this time you'll notice that it didn't get auto approved. It's basically sitting waiting to be approved. So if I look at my Traders Post paper broker, you'll see that I have this pending trade here now that's in a status of new. And as soon as I approve it, that's basically like me manually approving the trade, which effectively does what would happen if you had auto submit on and it auto submitted and auto approved the trade and sent it to the broker. And you can see that it's queued again and waiting for the next market open to send that that order to the broker. So I'm gonna unqueue this one again, and I'm gonna click reject. Um, one interesting thing, and I might switch over to my local development environment so I can show you how things work. It's a little hard to show you the end-to-end -end functionality when the market is closed. Um, but one interesting thing about the Traders Post paper broker is that it actually, really doesn't respect the market hours when you're manually trading with the, the paper broker. So I can actually enter a position in Square right now, even though the market is technically closed. Um, now, that's not really the best if you're really testing a real strategy with a paper account, um, but it's good to be able to test after hours just to like make sure that your web hooks all work and everything is wired up correctly so that you can test things even when the market is closed. But for actually testing a strategy to measure its performance, you're definitely gonna to wanna to use a more proper paper broker that comes from something like Alpaca or TradeStation, um, TD Ameritrade and Robinhood. They do not offer paper trading. So you'll wanna, it's free to create an account with Alpaca. It's free to create an account with TradeStation and you can connect multiple different brokers to Traders Post and have them all available to choose from over here. So I'm gonna close this position now. I'm just gonna exit all of the square positions. And before I, uh, the last thing that I wanna show you before I hop over to my local development environment for Traders Post is uh, I'm gonna show you how you can actually set up the alert in TradingView for a webhook. Um, so I'm gonna go grab that webhook URL that we saw earlier. And let's copy it, copy it into my clipboard. And now when I go back over to TradingView, you'll see that I have a ton of alerts already set up. These are the, all the alerts 
that I've configured for the tickers that I've made available for the Momo strategy and the Momo stock strategy and the Momo ETF strategy. So you see that I have trend following Momo on my chart. And if you just open up the pane on the right and then click alerts, you'll see that there's this create alert button at the top right. And from there, you can choose under the condition drop down, choose trend following. And then you'll see in your, in your copy of Momo in TradingView, this will be called Traders Post Buy Alert and Traders Post Sell Alert. Um, Project X was actually the very early, early name of Traders Post prior to us launching it as a business. Um, my version of the Momo indicator just hasn't been updated to, to show Traders Post Buy Alert and Traders Post Sell Alert. So I'm going to choose Project X Buy Alert. We're going to choose once per bar close because we, we don't want to get alerted until the bar closes. If you had it as once per bar, see how I'm on the 30 minute chart. And if the indicator visually indicated halfway through the 30 minute bar, then it would actually send the alert. And some strategies that's desirable, but in this strategy, it's the close of the bar that matters. You want to wait until the bar actually closes for when you want to actually send the alert. So let's go back over here again, Project X buy alert once per bar close, and we're gonna uncheck notify on app. We want the alert to be open-ended, meaning that it will never expire. I think this option is only available for um, the top tier plan available within TradingView. Um, so if you don't have a paid plan or you have one of the lower paid plans, you can't make it open-ended and the alert will expire after a certain amount of time passes. So we want to send this alert as a webhook and we're going to paste that URL that I copied in here earlier. And let's just give it a name like TQQQ Momo 30 minute buy. And you'll notice here that the message got automatically filled in with something that might look kind of cryptic to you. This is what's called JSON, JSON. And it is like a structured data format that traders post can understand. So all of these uh, values in here, the time now, the interval, the ticker, the action, the open, high, low, and close, those values within these double curly brackets, those will get replaced when the alert gets sent by TradingView with the actual value. So like I'm setting up this alert right now on TQQQ. So this value right here will actually get replaced with TQQQ instead of sending over this, these, the, the double curly brackets. So just to show you an example over here, this is an alert that triggered for the nail ETF right at market close. And you see how the values right there, they're not the double curly brackets, they're replaced with the actual values. So the time has the timestamp that the alert was sent. The interval is 30, representing 30 minutes. The ticker was nail, the action was buy, and the open, high, low, and close are the values that were triggered, that were the values of the candle that triggered that alert. So, let, so let's just go look at that really quick. So let's go pull up nail. And you can see that it triggered a buy on this candle. The close of that candle, the number up here, pay attention to that when I hover over the candle, is 117.84. And if you look at the, what oh, did I get that right? 117.84. That's interesting. Why would that be different? Am I on the 30 minute? Yes, it is possible. Brian asked, is it possible for a trader supposed to execute trades and extended hours? And yes, when you're editing a strategy subscription, you can check these options, allow entry and allow exit extended hours. So when I check these checkboxes, 
you notice how the good Intel canceled right here and extended hours is disabled. But as soon as I save that, it changes the order type to good Intel canceled plus extended hours. So whenever, um, and I, I can actually demonstrate how that works now, now that I've enabled extended hours, let's go send a webhook and it, it'll actually let it through. And I have auto submit disabled. So I'm just gonna view this trade. It looks good. It's a good until canceled plus extended. So as soon as I approve that, this should let it all the way through. Yep, so we entered a new long position. That order was filled. And now if I go back over to my paper broker here, you'll see that we have this long position open. So let's, let's send an exit signal now. So let's send a sell. So you'll see now that we have this sell and it shows that the exit order is a limit sell for $156 and it's good until canceled plus extended hours. So as soon as I click approve and that order got filled and now if I go back over to my paper broker here, you'll see that that signal resulted in me entering square and then immediately exiting it once I sent that sell signal. All right, so that's basically how um, you can set up the alerts in trading view. You basically wanna set up a buy alert and a sell alert for each ticker. So two alerts per ticker. Um, the max amount of alerts that trading view gives you is 400. So in theory, if you used up all of your alerts, that means that you could have 200 tickers set up sending alerts to traders post. Um, your normal person is probably not going to be algo trading 200 tickers. You're probably going to want to find one or two, maybe four or five, um, and set up alerts. So, you know, you're really probably at max, you're only going to be using maybe 20 or 30 alerts in order to send those signals to traders post. Um, so I'm going to switch over now to my local development environment to kind of show you some of the things that we're working on um, in the future, like future, uh, future functionality. So we have support for futures. Um, we're working on support for options. So you can see here, I have an open options position. This is a call on the leveraged queues. Um, the futures, same thing, you can open up positions. Um, so you can see all the individual symbols for, for the NQ, for the E-mini NASDAQ 100 futures. Um, initially, we're only going to support uh, NQ, ES, MES, um, and MNQ. And we'll slowly expand uh, to other symbols in the future. Uh, but we're going to start with, with the very simple, basic ones to begin. And you'll see once this functionality is live in production, you'll see you have the ability to choose uh, more than just stock. You all actually won't see this section within your, your Trader's Post account, um, but in the future, you'll be able to choose what asset class you actually wanna buy when, whenever you receive a signal. So I could get a signal for Square, and in some cases, I want to buy options, and in other cases, I may want to buy stock. And you'll see here, that's why I have stock selected there. And just to explain quickly, the options that are available for the options asset class, um, you can choose whether or not you want to trade puts or calls. And effectively, the way this works is you can input these filters that run against the option chain and it filters down the option chain to find a contract that matches your criteria. So I'm gonna leave these all blank right now, but if I click save here and you'll see that I, this functionality locally is a little bit different than what I was showing you earlier. We renamed 
long to bullish and short to bearish, uh, just because it makes a little bit, it's a little bit more clear. Um, so in this case, um, it's a bullish signal and I have it configured to, to use calls. So it's going to buy to open a square call. And you'll notice that the contract that it chose right here, which is basically the nearest expiration, the January 7th, 152.50 uh, strike call. And you can use these filters then to say, well, I don't want to buy a, an options contract that's expiring this week. I want to buy a leap. So you can input a value into this expiration field and it'll basically filter out any options contracts that don't meet that criteria. So now when I click save here, look at what happens to the contract that got selected. It basically selected the, the first contract that is at least one year out. Let's take it a one step further. Um, Let's do, there may not be a contract available two years out, but let's see if there is. Yep. So now it's selected the January 19th, 2024 call. And let's change this to, um, let's change this to puts. And let's change this to bearish. So now you'll see that this is going to buy, um, sorry, uh, I have this backwards. So the bearish example would mean that when we get a bearish signal and you have it configured for puts, you're going to get a buy to open a put. And all the functionality for deciding quantity size works the same. Um, so let's see, this is connected to a trade station margin account. And that trade station margin account is almost a million dollars. So, and I have it configured right now. Let's see. I don't have any position sizing configured right here. Um, so it just defaults to a quantity of one. And this is a new feature that's available that's going to be in production sometime in January where you could just hard code a quantity to buy if you didn't want to dynamically calculate it based off of um, your portfolio size and the price of the contract. So when I click save here, now that value gets updated to five. So let's say we actually did wanna do a percent of our portfolio value. So let's do 10%, 10% of almost a million dollars is a hundred thousand dollars. If I click save, you'll see that this quantity that it buys, the number of contracts goes up significantly and it's almost a hundred thousand dollars worth of put contracts. So let's just switch this back to uh, bullish and I'm gonna, I'm just gonna save this and I'm gonna switch back over to the, the stocks um, example. So I can kind of just show you, let me get out of here. All right, bear with me one second. All right, so I'm gonna go, um, let's see, I'm going to, let me think here, what do I wanna do? I'm gonna create a new subscription. I'm gonna delete all of these. And I'm gonna create a new subscription for this stock strategy but I'm gonna connect it to this paper broker right here. And we're going to auto submit. We wanna take both sides, not one or the other. You can actually take both sides so that you can actually go long and then you can also go short. So let's limit this one to only square and let's configure it to buy stock. And let's do, um, Let's do 10% of our portfolio value. And we will entry market and exit market. So we'll click save here now. And let's click enable. So 
So now when I trigger a signal for this, um, let me make sure that this paper broker is empty. Yep, it is. And I'm just gonna reset this account back to the $100,000. And we'll reset the positions in the order history. And what I'm gonna do now is I'm going to trigger a webhook for this stocks webhook. And let's do send request and we'll buy square. And you'll see now I have um, that market buy for square was submitted. And now I have this open position in my paper account. Now, I'm gonna show you what it looks like when you want to flip from being long to being short. So I'm gonna turn off auto submit just so you can kind of see what it looks like before we submit it. And I'm going to send another request to that webhook to sell, which means it's gonna exit bullish and enter bearish. So when I click send, <laughs> actually, yeah, this isn't gonna work because in my local environment um, <laughs> is still, is still being worked on. This is functionality that's not quite done yet. Um, but you can see basically that it would exit this open long position and then it would open a short position with a new entry order. So I think that's pretty much it for what I wanted to show you guys today. Um, does anyone else have any questions or anything else that they, they'd like me to look at? Just feel free to type it in the chat. Awesome, I don't think I see any questions so far. Great. <laughs> Hugo, yeah. Hugo says, can't wait to have French brokers supported. Yeah, definitely. Our plan is to add more brokers. Um, the, the next one that will probably uh, be able to be used in France is interactive brokers. I know that there are other brokers that are even more specific to France, but interactive brokers is one of the ones that I think uh, French citizens can, can use. Um, Brian says, when is Apple going to 200? Man, I don't know. They just hit that 3 trillion uh, market cap, I think yesterday, actually. Um, so we'll see. Let's see what they're at right now. I didn't even look to see what they closed at. Nice. Hugo says Interactive Brokers is quite well known in France. Yeah, they're a really great broker. Um, yeah, so it looks like, let's go to the daily chart. Yeah, Apple, you know, after having a strong day yesterday, had a little bit of a sell off. I wouldn't be surprised if we saw some more selling. Um, it's pretty far off of the 100 day moving average. So, you know, you can kind of look at what's happened in the past. Um, it gets up here pretty far away from the 100 day moving average and then goes back down and retest that moving average. And I would expect that, you know, it's maybe meets halfway, the moving average comes up to right about here and the price comes down and hits that moving average and then bounces. So Don asks, I have Matt's 78 minute moment long. Can I change the tickers myself? Yes, you can. Um, all you have to do is go into your strategy subscription and let me show you what that would look like, Don. I'm gonna delete this. I'm gonna clear all this out and I'm gonna delete the webhook and delete my strategy. Let's delete my subscription first. And I'm gonna delete this strategy. So if I were to subscribe to this Momo stocks strategy, just click subscribe. You already have a subscription created, um, but you'll see this list of tickers down here. These are basically all of the tickers that we have available inside of the 78 minute Momo strategy. So if you wanted tickers that weren't on here, that would actually require you to set up your own alerts within TradingView for those tickers with your own strategy and your own webhook within Trader's Post. 
the the shared strategy that you can just subscribe to without having to do any work in trading you to set up your own alerts you're basically limited to these tickers that we've set up for you but you know there are a lot of there are a lot of good names in here that are still trending uh, you'll definitely just want to look through all the tickers find ones that are still trending upwards um, and definitely recommend getting that strategy tester from Matt so that you can actually back test these names um, to see what their historical performance is with Momo. Hugo says there is also Trade Republic, which is the Robinhood like broker that becomes more and more popular in France. I'd love to see this one implemented. Let's see if Republic France, do they have? see if they have an API that would allow us to integrate with them. I'm not sure, Hugo, I'll have to look into that to see if Trade Republic has an API. Oh, it's unofficial, which is kind of like Momo, or I'm sorry, which is kind of like Robinhood. Robinhood has an API, but it's unofficial. Um, but it looks like people have kind of reverse engineered uh, the API for Trade Republic and we might be able to get it to work. Looks like they have an unofficial API here that someone, someone built. Awesome. Any other questions? Anything else that anyone wants me to look at? Um, feel free. Don't, don't hesitate to ask questions. Adam says, by the way, a customer service rep told me today that Thinkorswim has an API now. Not sure if it's configured to where your service will integrate. To be honest, Adam, I think that, I think that customer service representative uh, frankly didn't know what they were talking about. I don't think that's actually true. What he was referring to, it, it, people, most people don't understand that the TD Ameritrade and Thinkorswim are de technically different backends. And so Thinkorswim does have an API, it's just via TD Ameritrade, but Thinkorswim doesn't have an API directly only for itself. Um, it's a little confusing, you know, if you understand the history of, TD Ameritrade and Thinkorswim. Thinkorswim was a separate product that was not owned by TD Ameritrade. And then TD Ameritrade bought Thinkorswim. And the backends of those systems are actually technically still two separate backends. They just kind of, the developers that, that work for TD Ameritrade effectively kind of integrated the backends, but they did it on the surface. So you can use a Thinkorswim account through the TD Ameritrade API, and you can kind of work and trade on that account on Thinkorswim and on the TD Ameritrade platform and on the TD Ameritrade API. But underneath the hood, it's kind of like syncing the positions and syncing the orders back and forth between the TD Ameritrade backend and the Thinkorswim backend. Um, there's also some other uh, big changes that are coming. Uh, TD Ameritrade was acquired by, who was it? I can't remember. Oh yeah, Schwab. So the Charles Schwab Corporation acquired TD Ameritrade. And at some point in the future, the TD Ameritrade API will go away and Traders Post will have to switch our integration from integrating with TD Ameritrade to integrating with Char the Charles Schwab API. And all of the TD Ameritrade customers are gonna get migrated over to the Charles Schwab platform. But that's, they've told me that's potentially, you know, 24 months away from where we are today. So Brian asks, so you'll have this monthly? Yes, the plan is to have a webinar um, on the first Tuesday of every month at 4 p.m. Eastern time. And the goal is to just answer questions for people and just kind of offer a forum for people to ask questions and for me to show and demonstrate what functionality we're working on in the future, 
uh, get feedback from customers and just kind of have a little bit more regular monthly interaction between uh, Traders Post and the Traders Post customers. So Adam asked, in your experience, how close is the trading new strategy backtesting to real, real world results? This is a really great question. I think it's really important because if you, if you think about how, let's go over to trading view and let's look at this back tester. So let's look at it on the 30 minute chart and let's change the date time frame again to oops. Whoa, my cursor's going crazy. Uh, that won't work. Let me do, see you, Kristen. Thanks for joining. So let's look at one of these as an example. So there, there are always going to be scenarios where it's going to be hard for me to find one, but I think I can explain it. Let me see if I can find find an example. So like imagine you got triggered in to buy right here. And imagine that alert comes in to Trader's Post right when that candle closes. Well, what if the next candle opened up and it never went back down to the close of the candle that triggered the alert? In, in a real scenario, you may not get filled in a real broker because the simulated back testing, like you always get filled no matter what. Even if the price never came back down, um, you're always gonna get filled. So if you're doing limit orders, there's a chance that you might not get filled. If you do market orders, you're gonna get a different entry price than the price that the strategy triggered. So. Just like paper trading, uh, back testing is, is never going to be exactly like it is in live, but it's close. And it's even though, even though it's not exact, it's not a reason not to back test. It's always going to be better to back test. Um, it may be subtly different, um, but you just, you always want to be back testing. You always want to be testing things and you never want to be. Uh, testing a brand new strategy with live money without having back tested it or at a, at a minimum paper trading it for some amount of time before you actually decide to trade it with live money. And if you do decide to trade it with live money, I usually do it with very small quantities um, just in case, you know, you want to kind of, you don't want to just like dump in the, jump in the deep end of the pool, kind of want to dip your toes in, test it, back test it, paper trade it. And once you feel confident that everything's working the way you expect it to work, then test it with live money and maybe just do one share uh, at a time initially. And then once you see it working with live money successfully, then you want to uh, switch it to the full quantities. Don says some stocks just take off and leave without you. Yes, it, it does happen on very volatile days. You can get a signal and the price just moves so fast upward that it never comes back down and never gets you filled. So if you, if you don't want to get missed, um, there are ways you can kind of work around it, but it requires more manual work and requires you to kind of be at the computer and sort of babysit these orders to make sure that they get filled. So it's just kind of a trade-off of some people like automated trading because it means you don't have to do anything. But if you're not doing anything and you're not watching these signals, it's possible that you may not get filled 100% of the time. See you later, Brian. Thanks for joining. Um, so yeah, it's just, it's something to be aware of. Um, the, the higher the time frame, the more likely that you're going to get filled, the lower the time frame, you know, on a five minute chart, things move much more rapidly. Um, so there's a chance that you could get a signal and you just miss it. There was actually one that happened the other day. Ah, oh, man, I can't remember which symbol it was on.
I mean, this is a close one. See how it triggered right here? The close of this candle was 150.62. And the low of this candle was 150.38. So it did actually, that, see the wick right there did come back down and it would have wicked you in. But it's very possible that it could have just gapped up above the close of this candle and the price never came back down and you wouldn't have gotten filled. So, yeah, great question, Adam. All right, well, I think we're going to call it a wrap for today. I appreciate you guys joining the first webinar and appreciate you guys asking questions and keeping me on my toes. And uh, if you have any suggestions on future topics uh, or other questions you didn't uh, get to, to ask here, uh, feel free to drop an email to support at traderspost.io. Um, and additionally, if you are not a part of our community, uh, go ahead and go to the traderspost.io website and click the community link in the, in the header. And I'll link that in the chat here and join our Discord chat. Uh, we have a hundred or so people in there where people are just kind of talking about uh, traders post, talking about algo trading in general. And it's a good place where you can kind of interact and engage with other automated traders within the traders post community. And I'm also in there as well. So if you want to ask questions in there, instead of sending an email to the support email address, feel free to do that as well. Thanks, Don. We'll see you all later. See you at the next one. Thanks, everyone. Bye. Thank you.